it's time to move to Mr. Tulasi Das, CEO of uh, Taril Power. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you for giving me an uh, opportunity for this uh, uh, panel discussion. Uh, actually, uh, I think uh, 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 in five minutes, uh, no more points. We uh, need to discuss only uh, three things. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, for this uh, Saura project, so we have a uh, uh, targeting for around 200 million or something like that. And we are uh, moving to uh, around uh, 100 megawatt right now. So uh, the main uh, thing uh, we are observing is the uh, for last one year we have achieved around 75 to 80 megawatt something like that. But uh, uh, this upcoming for some uh, Anet, uh, solar city project itself is coming around 100 megawatt. So the main concern is the if uh, the public uh, need to come for an investment. Uh, there should be some financial assistance or financial uh, like uh, uh, the loans or something like that need to provide to them. Then only the the mass quantity or mass uh, uh, volume you can achieve. Otherwise, you know, like uh, if we are expecting the public to invest and uh, uh, do the projects and everything, the pace of the uh, work will be uh, not that much, uh, uh, you know, like uh, uh, good. So I am uh, requesting to the all the stakeholders that uh, if we can do something like uh, uh, for the financial assistance and everything to the uh, this uh, uh, public or uh, like uh, uh, normal individuals, that would be much better. Then uh, second one is the energy storage. Uh, we all are uh, behind the grid tied uh, power plants. Uh, ultimately, the uh, the thing is, uh, uh, we believe that you know the storage is something important. Uh, 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 tomorrow or uh, the near future, uh, the storage should be there. So uh, there should be a perfect plan for the storage also uh, in an individual part. Like uh, uh, KCV itself is doing something uh, for the the best, but uh, uh, still in uh, each uh, householding we should have something like you know. Uh, the off-grid systems or hybrid systems, something like that. So that would be much better for uh, uh, everyone. And uh, uh, that is a real, uh, like, you know, sustainability, you know, like uh, renewable energy is sustainable. Okay, we are sustained. That means uh, we should have something like uh, energy storage. That is what we believe. The third one is the uh, regulatory changes. It means uh, uh, one year back uh, when we have started our uh, projects for Saura, or one, one or two years, uh, maybe something like that. But uh, uh, before that one, there were so many uh, uh, regulations, like uh, even uh, I think uh, next is uh, Shaji sir. Shaji sir can explain much better than me. But uh, the regulations were there, uh, I mean, uh, for each and everything, uh, whenever we are doing some projects, uh, there there were so many restrictions were there. But uh, once KCB started, there uh, the the Savara projects and everything, the relaxations came, and it has helped a lot for everyone. I um, mean, each and every developer or integrator in Kerala. So uh, that should continue in a much better way, and uh, uh, that is the only thing. Uh, just uh, uh, I I wanted to share with you. Thank you. Thank you. The next panel is uh, can point out the major issues in this sector. I think uh, these insights uh, will be will be helpful for each and everyone uh, gathered here. Uh, since uh, the client perspective, the, the consumer perspective is uh, very important in each business, in each policy making. So, it's my privilege to welcome. Uh, Mr. Shaji Sebastian, President of Industrial Electricity Consumers Consortium, Kerala. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I take this opportunity to thank the organizers and the, especially for uh, putting me in, the, in this group of subjects. Here the focus written is, one thing is regulatory challenges. The second one, I, I am very much interested in storage solutions. And uh, finally, the time. My experience in this field is more than 40 years in electrical construction industry. And a part of that, especially after 2004, I was associated with the regulatory framework in two ways. Some time I was a 
member of advisory committee subsequently uh, i was getting involved in regulatory framework by making supply code as well as whenever this uh, renewable regulators came totally involved in that so because of my interest in subjects the things i like to highlight is first thing is net metric everybody is concerned about this net metric and how long it will continue and up to how much rating it will continue that are the two doubts which we are having at this stage anyway superstar is not here but even then we should do all especially our association and everybody should take up the net with superstar that uh, we should continue with this one mega facility in net metric uh somehow or other we managed to get it done uh that everybody knows whoever is in the association knows that last time it, uh, our regulatory commission tried to reduce it from 500 1 megawatt to 500 kb and uh, we almost to more than uh, 200 numbers of us including these uh, small scale industrial sector people as well as uh, upc contractors attend the hearing and we managed to keep it at 1 1 megawatt we should try to continue with it for at least for another 2 3 years we should put pressure on that everybody should put pressure on that then when we are talking about the connected road permitted that is second thing uh, in which we should give more focus uh, for uh, connecting solar it is limited to the contract demand or the connected road of that particular system this is not applicable to domestic domestic it is exempted up to 20 kw but uh, above that it is uh, limited that limitation is creating some problems especially when it is coming to its calculation whatever it is now it was taken up with the regulatory commission and they are asking to multiply uh, the kw rating of the uh, inverter with the point i don't know from where the point in figure came and uh, that multiplication is done means a lot of our epc and uh, contractors are facing problem uh, to select the size of the inverter and once they are doing it i don't know how it can be reduced because you know our uh, regulation is like this the inverter capacity is taken at the solar capacity not the installed capacity of the solar panels um, then it is coming we we can install more than capacity of the inverter solar they are not taking care of all those things only inverter capacity is coming into the picture when we are coming to gross metering net metering and uh, net billing there is a big problem for gross metering not only the tariff problem which we are getting about 3 rupees 20 paise or 60 paise or whatever it is the major another problem is how i am an electrical man and how it is getting connected to the system we are already taking the connection from the grid supply from the uh, kscb line directly and if we want to give it back to kscb again we have to go for uh, uh, three breaker panels then uh, cabling then another all release and protective equipments we have to have. We, we are not getting permitted to connect the same system directly through the same meter it's not practical because you know then it will we will have to go for net metering and uh, and uh, measuring of the solar separately that anyway i have taken up the matter with the regulatory commission and uh, we should get some permission in that that is the uh, problem which we are facing for gross metering and net, uh, net metering regulations actually in the regulation one advantage is there if you are installing solar in our premises they need if the capacity is above 1 megawatt only 5 percent reduction is there even if we accept that it is very difficult to do it practically i am facing some problems the large projects of 2 megawatts and all those things that everybody is facing the problem then uh, the most lucrative area going to come in solar is in storage storage means i am doing some projects uh, especially in the hilly areas of kerala munnar ramakalpet and all where uh, what i am uh, what problem i am facing wind is sufficient wind is there and solar is there yes the attraction is that you know whenever solar is not there wind is there because you know uh, wind is uh, blowing there during the rainy season and the solar we are getting during this january february march april and all when uh, there is uh, less wind that's the advantage which we are having there but we are not having a proper storage solution means you know the storage solution which should be focused on generating the or storing the power at the 15000 rupees 15000 to maximum 20000 rupees per kw i don't know whether any supplier is there to do that 
as well as a proper hybrid incubator that is going to have a great future, especially in Kerala, a high range belt, as well as in uh, our uh, hostel belt. It is going to have a very good future. Then, when it is coming to open access, uh, the main problem which we are facing is the cross subsidy charge. I don't know how that all over India we should take up the matter directly with the central government to eliminate the cross subsidy system. When 2003 Act came into force, it was written that the cross subsidy will continue for further two or three years. Even though it is continuing, uh, it is it is killing the industry. Cross subsidy subcharge is killing the industry, or else uh, we need to pay only about a one rupee, uh, almost a one rupee, ninety seven paisa or something as wheeling and open up the charges and all, all those things. People would have come and uh, started the uh, solar industry or even wind turbines. I am doing a pitch of two megawatt in Damakulam right now. We are doing it in open access. But the face, but the problem is cross subsidy is the problem that we should take up the matter. Then, of course, the metering system, the problem is that whenever generation is there, we should go for uh, three meters. That is really a complicated thing. Main meter, check meter, stand main meter. Government should make some rules that uh, below one megawatt or at least uh, not, I am not talking about one megawatt, three or four megawatts. Some rating should be there. Above that only, this type of complicated metering should uh, come. Or else it's very expensive. And uh, it, uh, we are getting prevented to do, do it accordingly. Last one is tariff. When we are talking about the tariff, of course, in domestic market, solar is very advantageous because domestic tariff, you know, above 500 units, it is uh, almost 8 rupees. It's almost 8 rupees. And whenever we are reducing the consumption, and when we, if it comes to 50 units per month, it is only 3.5 rupees. That's a very decorative uh, thing. And uh, actually, we all solar people want to continue with the uh, tariff structure like this. That is better for us. And uh, as well as the, that permissions, the, irrespective of the control load, we can put the solar right now. All those things, we should get continued. And we should put ample pressure uh, over regulatory regime, as well as the government of Kerala, especially for keeping all these things uh, intact, at least for another uh, few years. Still, storage is uh, solution is come, uh, enriching and coming to the uh, dream of our solution. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you, sir. And now it's time to move to Mr. Avinash, uh, Power One Microsystems Limited. Okay. So, <coughs> I start. I begin thanking EQ for the opportunity. Uh, we uh, just take a couple of minutes to you know, tell about us. We power on microsystems. Private Limited is a power electronic company, three decades in the business of various products from UPS to frequency converters and in solar inverter manufacturing for about 10 years now. When we began with off grid inverters and almost seven, eight years ago with the on grid inverters, and recently, two, three years, we are into IP. So I am here in the session discussing about rooftop and distributed solar in Kerala and our uh, product which we manufacture which get installed is mostly into this segment of distributed uh, solar. So we are uh, we have a range of inverters from uh, 1 to 100 kilowatt and uh, these inverters are basically installed in the residential sector. So we have been seeing uh, last seven, eight years, we have seen uh, different types of market evolving in terms of a uh, solar rooftop. Initially, a uh, very few uh, people who are uh, who were thinking about green energy and they wanted to have a solar to boost something, you know, or to save uh, initial days before any regulations had come into picture, any net metering values are there. Very few people who wanted to go for solar installing on the rooftop, you know to tell people that you know solar is a green energy we have gone to the solar big corporates used to do gradually over a period of years uh, small commercial establishments they started coming you know exploring rooftop businesses in tier one cities where there was no power cuts actually because uh, these uh, rooftop on grid systems wherever there is a power cut during the sun hour it used to they used to get into losses of non-generation so this is how slowly this uh, segment started moving towards a uh, tier two cities when the net metering policies have come and you know in some of the in the states like Karnataka where the value was about nine rupees fifty six pence initially that kicked uh, you know people 
thinking towards what is this residential, what is this solar all about. And then calculation, there was no limit to put the, or curtail their sanction capacity to the installation. People with 25 kilowatt, 30 kilowatt installed 200 kilowatt back then. You know? That is where in one state I'm telling, it was there in most of the states. So this is how the solar started getting into people's mind as an investment from the investment perspective and started thinking about ROI. And when people wanted to invest something, it has become an investment segment for them. And then they started talking about four years, seven, so from seven years ROI to three years, four years now. So this all started happening with the commercial uh, uh, you know, installations and uh, you can say tax benefits to customers. And moving down the line, the customers who were in a rural area, say, tier two cities, where there was an intermittent power cut, they went for solar and then they started facing the, the issues of a power cut and solar inverters were not working. So over the year, this solar has reached to a very village level now. People want comfort as a first place and now most of the segment people, they want a comfort of electricity where you know, they should not feel any power cut. So that is one group of people and the other is an investment perspective where they want to have this as a solar rooftop installation as an investment segment and earn, become an investment out of it. And there is other segment of people who want to go for solar as a corporate social responsibility or no, to, give, to get a green building credits, all these things. But when uh, almost four or five years ago, when we had a complaint, when our installations reached across India and from the rural tire two cities and the rural India, we started getting the you know, complaints of not working of solar systems when power goes. We, the dealers started selling these systems in taluka levels by educating to an extent, but people were not so aware that it will not work when power goes. So that time we come across, uh, we call it as a storage inverter or hybrid inverter. So now the market we are talking about net meter, cost meter, where we export the power. And in between, you know, to consume complete power, what we are generated on our rooftop can be achieved through going for a storage system. Uh, we can call it as a hybrid inverter. In the hybrid inverters, what happens, you know, you generate your power, you consume, you store. And you can set in uh, inverter parameters such way you can only export the power if you are generating excess than your consumption. With this, you know, you can avoid uh, thinking for net meter or gross meter initially for at least a domestic uh, sector up to 10 kilowatt. When we come up with this hybrid, you know, solution and this uh, SLDs, uh, we went to KSCB in the year end of 2019 or 20 where these as hybrid inverters were not approved back then. So KSCB took about uh, three to four months to study, analyze, you know, get all the certifications from uh, hybrid inverter manufacturers in India and then anti landing verification, all that happened in 2020, we got approval from KSCB. I mean, hybrid inverter installations got approval from KSCB in uh, Kerala. So despite that, the installation of hybrid uh, uh, Installations in Kerala has not gone beyond uh, value because of the cost involved. The cost uh, with the hybrid systems are a little higher compared to on grid. And uh, the people who when we tell it's a storage battery involved, then they think of a maintenance part who will take care and all that. But eventually, the things have changed uh, with five years of warranty for complete system. You know, storage has become a comfort for them. They don't see the power going off at any time with a perfectly designed system. So this, when this KSCB has given approval for this hybrid inverters, ANERT has come up with uh, some uh, a good tender requirements in Kerala where we as a, we are also a, you know, power EPC company who does a rooftop installation. So we had an opportunity to install some of the plants with a solar inverter for ANERT from, from 2 kilowatt to 10 kilowatt ranges in various government buildings in Kerala. So they are all working perfectly fine, which gives power backup and export power back to the grid like on grid mode. My point here is, you know, uh, as everybody is uh, talking and thinking of energy storage going forward, all these years we had opportunity to talk about tubular batteries for solar. 
now last one year things have changed and people talk only about lithium ion batteries so lithium ion batteries has got a more life you know like maintenance with respect to maintenance and operation is very easy you have got a bms you can see the parameters everything which is you know which it can be monitored online so with technology evolving and the lithium ion batteries coming into picture this hybrid inverter installation numbers have gone up significantly in last one year people ask hybrid inverter in place of on grid inverter so as a distributed solar up to 10 kilowatt we can always you know pitch i mean we can discuss in terms of a storage to the customer because they have a, their own generation facility at their own rooftop store the power and run all their uh, loads by generating the load power and excess if they are generating after all the consumption that they can export back to grid in this case you know uh, still this uh, net meter gross meter came completely into picture but discussion then we can think that the all generated power can consumed and the only the remaining power can be exported back to the grid so even if a gross meter comes there we are not losing much in terms of uh, selling power to the utility so this is uh, my point of view with respect to distributed generation of going for energy storage system and we have installed in other states it has it has become very popular with the government also bihar we done some 2000 number of installations for all the police stations and in karnataka all the gram panchayats what we call here all the rural uh, gram panchayat villages are solarized with the hybrid inverters so the inkal from kerala is also doing projects in karnataka uh, to energize every gram panchayat in karnataka so distribution energy distribution solar with the battery backup is the future you know where we can think more and take it to the customer thank you so uh, it's about the storage systems the new developments and i think uh, similar insights were there in the morning session also we cannot uh, deploy a lot of uh, on grid systems unconditionally definitely the sto storage systems need to be improved uh, many alternatives are coming up 